welcome to our Modern Money Journey. Just a brief reminder that I am not a licensed professional. This is not investment advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. Hi there, I'm Joe with our Modern Money Journey. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. And everyone, please make sure to hit the like button. The YouTube algorithm appreciates it, and so do we. Thank you. So, once again, we are in the middle of making a different video, actually on making passive income with cryptocurrency, and we had to stop so that we could address the crazy stuff that's going on in the markets once again. This time, however, it's got to do with Robinhood, Wall Street Bets Reddit page, Melvin Capital, and GameStonk. Sorry, I mean GameStop. So a brief synopsis of what's going on is a bunch of Redditors from the subreddit Wall Street Bets have used a short squeeze on GameStop, not GameStonk, to basically crush a Wall Street hedge fund known as Melvin Capital. So I know that's probably got your head spinning, but if you stick around, we'll explain it in a little bit more detail. So first we'll go over some terminology. Then we'll talk about how Wall Street Bets subreddit used GameStop to straight wreck a Wall Street hedge fund. Then we'll take a deeper dive into how the markets operate and work so that we can get a better idea of what really went down. So the first piece of terminology we need to go over is what's known as short selling or just shorting. Shorting a stock is when you borrow it, sell it, purchase it back at a later time to return to the lender. Now some of you are probably wondering why would you do this? Well, if you believe the stock price is going to drop, you can make money off of this. You borrow it from your broker, you borrow the shares, you sell them out on the market, and then you wait for the price to drop, you purchase them back at a lower price and return them to your broker. You keep the difference in the price drop, so you profit from this. However, if the price rises, some short sellers may be forced to buy back in at a higher price to return those shares to their broker to prevent further losses. This buying pressure from them buying at this higher price drives the price up even higher. Now, if the market conditions are right, this can lead into a snowball effect where one short seller goes out and buys to close their short sells. This drives the price up which causes more short sellers to have to go out and buy more to cover their losses, which drives the price up higher, which causes more short sellers to have to go out and buy those high prices to cover their losses, which then drives the prices up higher. So this can lead to a dramatic increase in price over a very short amount of time. This is what's known as a short squeeze. A short squeeze is an extreme rise up in price from short sellers scrambling to buy to cover their short positions before they lose more money. These types of short squeezes can typically only occur when a stock is very heavily shorted and when a catalyst occurs that drives its price up just enough for the first wave of short sellers to have to buy back in to cover their losses which then starts that snowball or chain reaction event of more and more short sellers having to buy back in to cover their losses as their losses rapidly grow as the price rises. So this is where Wall Street Bets, Wall Street Bets, a subreddit page on finance, we'll say, our beloved GameStop and the Wall Street hedge fund known as Melvin Capital come into play. So hedge fund Melvin Capital was heavily short on GameStop. Seems like all of Wall Street was. In fact, if you take a look here, you can see that their short interest is over 130%. That means there's more shares shorted than even exist. How is this even allowed? This is absurd and should be criminal. So in step some researchers from Wall Street Bets that noticed that Melvin Capital was so short on GameStop. So they started instructing everybody to buy. Buy, buy, buy. Buy GameStop left and right. This drove the price up, which started to cause them to have to scramble to cover their short positions. 
This led to waves of short sellers just being absolutely crushed in one of the most enormous short squeezes that has ever taken place. We saw GameStop launch from nearly $5, clear up to almost $500, and absolutely obliterate Melvin Capital's short positions in GameStop. This required Melvin Capital to get a $3 billion bailout from .72 in Citadel hedge funds. Now, if the story just ended here, we could all sit back and just have a smoke and a pancake. A what? A smoke and a pancake. You know, flapjack and a cigarette? Hmm? All right. Cigar and a waffle? No. Pipe and a crepe? No. Bong and a blintz? But that's not the end. Because during GameStop's meteoric rise to the top to crush Wall Street hedge funds, brokerages for the little people like us, Robinhood, let the people trade. These platforms shut down access to GameStop and several other stocks sort of halting the short squeeze. Now, in a quick rush to point fingers, which even I did, we need to take a step back and take a look deeper into how the markets operate so that we can get a better idea of what might really have went down. All right, so to get a better understanding of the markets, let's take a look at how purchasing a stock works. So you wish to make a purchase of a stock. You go to your broker who acts as the interface between you and the markets. So your broker arranges the transactions on the market after receiving the order from you. Your broker is paired with a clearing firm, which performs critical back office duties to ensure the transactions complete smoothly. This consists of sending transactional data to the National Securities Clearing Corporation. Sometimes brokers act as their own clearing firms, like Robinhood, for example. So like I said, the broker acts as the interface between you and the market. So your broker places your order that you wish to make out on the market And the market is made up of all the market participants. It is an aggregation of all the buy and sell orders, typically on a platform such as the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ Exchange. All the market participants that are placing these buy and sell orders consist of retail, institutional, and market makers. Let's take a look at each one of them in a little bit more depth. So retail consists of traders and investors like you and I. These are just normal, everyday people putting their money in the markets. Institutional investors consist of professional or certified investment managers managing large sums of money. And then lastly, we have market makers. Market makers are special financial institutions that provide exchanges with liquidity i.e. they make buys and sells when necessary to help facilitate smooth trades in the market. So, once your order is placed out on the market, received by someone else, and then filled, your clearing firm and the other participants clearing firm will send their data to the NSCC. The NSCC, or the National Securities Clearing Corporation, receives the data from the buyer and seller's clearing firms and coordinates with them to settle the trade on the settlement date, which is two days after the trade occurs. The NSCC maintains a centralized ledger tracking the stock holdings of all brokers. Your broker, in turn, maintains a ledger of all of its customers' holdings including you. So that, in a nutshell, is how purchasing a stock works and gives us a better idea of how the market works. So currently, everybody's blaming everybody else for the halting of the purchasing of these stocks on these exchanges and platforms. The clearing firms are blaming the brokerages and the brokerages are blaming the clearing firms and everybody's just blaming everybody else. But as we've just seen, there's a lot of players and a lot of moving parts to the markets. 
So we need to just all relax, take a step back, wait for more data and facts to come out before we jump to any conclusions, and then we can make our minds up later. All right, all you bulls and bears, we'll see you next time.